Hi, welcome to One on One TV. We have a special guest today, Mr. Eugene Delanato. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard of him because he is doing something that we have known about for years, the Black Pages. Eugene Delanato is an international representative of peace, health, and wealth. He is the publisher of Black Pages International. It is a print, online, and mobile phone directory committed to connecting consumer investors to African-American businesses, in particular, and businesses globally. Delonato is also a playwright and producer whose play Back in the Day and the Fuzzy Wuzzy Man will be staged in a Chicago theater in 2013. However, he is mostly proud of being a husband, father, and grandfather. Well, you know, I visited your website because you have something else that's new coming out. Uh, the Dauphin Investor, the Dauphin Tank. Yes. So I looked at your schedule and I was saying, my God, you know, you print, you spread yourself pretty thin. That was a schedule. Uh, how can you do it? One moment, one person at a time. One moment and one person at a time. Well, let's talk about Black Pages International. How long have you been doing Black Pages International? And what is the purpose of Black Pages International? I started with this company 12 years ago in the year 2000. I met the legendary Arnett French, who had started Black Pages in Kansas City and Dallas. And we hit it off, um, and um, I knew that I had discovered one of my life's purpose, and that was to connect people um, and to get them to invest in each other. And so that was 12 years ago, and it is utterly my passion to grow our community in particular, and communities overall, uh, to get people to understand that uh, what you are looking for, you already have. You already were blessed with a talent or a skill, and you simply need to acknowledge it and live your life accordingly. So I connect, first of all, people who do that, and um, we merge our talents and skills, and we magnify them, and we're ushering in this period of, of, of a thousand years of peace, and certainly we need it. We see what's going on in the world. And so um, it's my joy to be here because I was given this opportunity by uh, my mentor, again, Arnett French, uh, my parents and grandparents who sacrificed so much to make sure that I understood that it was their legacy living and speaking through me. So I'm standing on top of their shoulders on their efforts. Uh, they're doing it all. All I do now is listen. <laughs> so looking back on those 12 years, mm -hmm. What have you seen in the way of results? Are you happy with the way everything went? Uh, do you have other things that you would like to do that you haven't done already with Black Pages? Yes, I think uh, right now we're in the process of uh, redeveloping the uh, website and uh, so that we can speak to both the baby boomers and the seniors and uh, that millennium group, I believe they're called. So now you can see our book uh, in print and online, and soon you'll be able to see it uh, on your iPad and on your uh, cellular phone as well. Mm -hmm. So in, in your travel, because you are international, yes. do you ever travel outside of the country uh, talking about black pages? Well, well, right now, those efforts, those efforts are being made through the website. Mm -hmm. And so uh, soon we'll be able to uh, open up markets in Ghana and to actually uh, travel abroad, but right now we're utilizing the technology to take us there first. Mm -hmm. Our f first step, um, you know, now you can, um, through uh, the technology, mm -hmm. um, to speak to audiences and you never leave um, mm -hmm. your desk. And so uh, we're about to do more webinars and um, utilize the technology first to take us there. Mm -hmm. Because Do you ever delegate that authority to someone else or are you just the person? No, that no, goes no, out? no, 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 um, no. Dele delegation is, is, is entirely crucial. I was just having a conversation with the gentleman I just met. And um, prior to this moment, or prior to uh, moments earlier, 
Uh, I thought that perhaps I was the only one who could do this. And, and of course, uh, I realized um, that uh, there are others who can do it better than I can. And so what I started to do was to use the model of collaborative partners and to aggressively and actively look for others who are experts in their various fields and then to connect with them. And so with this collaboration process, now we're able to, to, to marry our efforts and to merge those efforts. And so now uh, I've since met uh, wonderful people like you, your daughter and your son, and so as we start to realize that uh, and to communicate and to collaborate, then, of course, uh, we can do marvelous things. And so that's precisely what we're doing now. Well, you know, I can certainly say you do a lot of networking because I've seen you at a lot of meetings yes. that I go to. You yes. look up, there is Eugene. Yeah. And then your wife uh, also has somewhat of a business that she was talking about the other night at another networking session that yes. we were at. And... Uh, She's doing a good job, too. So there you are, a dynamic duo. Yes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so we look for other dynamic duos. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's a process now mm -hmm. uh, that we utilize um, in, insofar as looking for people who are conscious of their own divinity, looking for people of, who are conscious of their own ability to take this moment. And this moment then becomes another moment. And so now we're recreating, actually, mm -hmm. if we're conscious of it, mm -hmm. we're creating the future right now. So if we deal with this moment in a magnificent and in a way that we intend to utilize it, conscious of our ability, then the next moment will take care of itself. Well, you know, you seem so much into what you're doing and you seem like you know what you're where you're going. <laughs> so let's talk about, did you put down a five-year business plan? Uh, what you wanted to do, you know, some people write out a plan. As a matter of fact, I think these people you have on the back of your ma cover of your magazine, they were supposed to tell you what they expected to do in the next five years. Was well, it five or ten? It was twenty. Twenty? Oh my God, <laughs> that's a long ways down the road. Yes, yes. In uh -huh. fact, um, when we started this process a year ago, uh, we invited ten people that we put on the cover. And uh, we had this event at Ice Theater a year ago, and they were required to uh, tell us what they intended to do by the year 2032. And then they would, would come and to share their best practices with us. And so what that did was when you project out 20 years now, okay, so now you're thinking 20 years out. And you claim it right now. You, you have a clear idea, mm -hmm. 20 years where you want to be. Now, that acts as a magnet to keep you in harmony with your present moments. Mm -hmm. Because if you really intend to, let's say, go to 47th Street, right? Mm -hmm. you, you intend to get there. So you just pick out 47 and you head in that direction. Now, when you're not thinking a thought that takes you to 47th Street, then you know that's not the thought that you should be thinking. Mm -hmm. Or if you say a word that's not taking you in the direction of 47th Street, you shouldn't be saying that. And absolutely, you shouldn't be doing that. So that acts as a magnet to kind of keep you focused. And if you stay focused on what you want, you'll get it. Like you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like you. Well, you know, these people had to be fairly young. When we were talking 20 years down the road, that's a long time. Well, I, I had one gentleman um, who was in his 90s, and he was candid. Oh. And, and, and he said that he uh, didn't intend to be here uh, for another 20 years, but he had in place uh, his son, uh, and uh, others who understood his legacy, understood his intent. And so he shared that information with them. And that information acts as an institution because when we talk about uh, visions, uh, when we're talking about really living in the moment, what we're really talking about is institution building. Because if you focused on what you want to accomplish and you lay a blueprint down, then someone can come behind you and they can pick up that blueprint and they can read it and they can take on from where you left off. And that's precisely what our intentions are. Well, you know, that's good. But I've known of a few instances where people who started businesses, mm -hmm. after they had left Earth, gone, dead, uh, and they had turned the business over to somebody else in the family, mm -hmm. uh, it didn't go anywhere. Yeah. Well, so uh, what do you tell those people, you know, who inherit these businesses? How can they keep them going? What should they look at? Well, the person who leaves the legacy should earnestly 
be searching for those individuals whose life's purpose can be realized when they pass the baton on to them. It may not necessarily be a family member. Just because you are a family member does not mean that you have that life's purpose. And if you don't have that life's purpose, then you should not pass the baton, in my opinion, to that person. Mm -hmm. So who are you passing it on to? Do you have someone that you would want to take it on, God forbid, if you retire and didn't want to do it anymore? Well, actually, yes. Uh, I'm actively and aggressively searching for someone who has that passion and purpose. And when I recognize that, the body language will reveal it. All of those intimate things will be revealed to me. And, and quite frankly, I just did meet a young man who mirrored some of my passions for community development, mm -hmm. for having a vision in terms of how he wanted the community to look like or the world to look like. And he was already engaged in those practices. Mm -hmm. And so we just kind of met each other and he looked at me and I looked at him and then we started to engage each other and then we started to see if that was really indeed the case because oftentimes you meet people and you have to get past the first mask and the second mask mm -hmm. and the third mask until you get to their core beliefs and what really impassions them because once you get to the why of your doing what you do, the why will get you beyond a mountain, a hurricane, anything that comes in the way because you know why you get up in the morning and you know why you're going. So I specifically look for those kind of people only. Mm -hmm. And you have to demonstrate it. You can't tell me that. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, you know, we the other night, uh, most of us were very impressed with this 20-year-old kid that yes. was there. I call yes. him a kid in 20 years. He's young. But he was very impressive because he seems like he knew what he was doing and where he was going. And he was very articulate. And, you know, you look at some 20-year-olds, they, they just didn't arrive where he is right now. Exactly. Yeah. And, and pretty much everybody was impressed by him. I know his name. Oh, you do? I have his phone number. What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> he was a scientist, right? Because yes. he was uh, yes. into organics. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And he has some of his stuff there. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. He he has a great product. Mm -hmm. Food. <laughs> <If you don't laughs> <eat. laughs> so how many people do you have working alongside you? Right now, I, I have um, a core group of 10. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I say to them is to look for one person to duplicate yourself. Mm -hmm. And then when they get that 10, then the same um, sense of urgency will be passed on and look for one other person who mirrors your passion and your purpose and your efforts and you just keep building out from there. So when you were younger and we we're talking about you getting out of high school and on your way to college and whatever, were you thinking about doing what you're doing now or did you have something else in mind? I had something else I in mind. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. I, had something else. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to be a singer. Yeah. I said I was going to be a singer and it ended up I, I'm a writer, but it's yeah. still in the arts. You know, we're yeah. still doing the same thing. So what do you want it to be? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I, um, I was passionate about playing sports uh -huh. and uh, I thought that I was going to be a professional football player until well, I went tall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then I, I went away to college and, and, and I saw these guys who their arms were bigger than my legs. <laughs> and so I knew then that it was time to put my cleats up. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> to start looking somewhere else. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. And this was where you looked. No, uh, no, did you no. try something else and then eventually yeah, yeah, you got I, here? I, I, I tried something else, but, but, um, I always um, was good at making friends. Mm -hmm. That was always a skill set that I had. Mm -hmm. I look back, I very rarely had fights unless I was defending someone else. And so uh, what I do now and what I urge people to do, uh, if, they, if that is their passion, mm -hmm. you should be making friends everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. You absolutely, in my opinion, should be making friends. Okay, now you want to tell them how they can get in your black pages as a business person. Yes. Um, go to our website, www.blackpagesinternational.com. 